Hello everyone, it's Pam here with Tattered Paper and Lace. And I am here today to um, bring the promised video on how I make um, this forged metal, if you would. I had used um, this piece in one of my collages, week 33, which was this past week, or no, this week. Um, and I used this piece that looks sort of like an industrial forged metal made from aluminum foil and alcohol ink. So today I wanted to show you how to do that, or, or my process. It's I'm sure there's others, and I'm sure others do it better than me. It's still a learning process for me. Um, so, but I do want to show you what you what you can do and how I achieve what I have here. So what you have before you is a variety of things that I have already made. So I will show each of those to you. Uh, this was my most recent piece, which I'm going to, has been stitched. This is aluminum foil that has been stitched to cardboard. And I'm going to make a, a, a small journal to go in a steampunk journal with this. So this was my latest piece before, and I, and I have I have a video before that's where I was experimenting with aluminum can, hard to cut, so I was trying to find a, an alternative to that. Uh, and then I did some shimmer paper, uh, trying to make that work, and that didn't work so well, although I do have a different example here of that sort of thing. Uh, then I, I said in that video that I was uh, going to try aluminum foil and I have done that and that does what I want it to do uh, which is a very similar look to the aluminum can. I like using the aluminum can it's very hard to cut with your cuddle bug so and that's what I have it might work better with a big shot or uh, you know some other machine but with mine it just I just couldn't get it to cut well. So all of these are made with aluminum foil on cardstock. I'm going to show you the different processes. These things and these were uh, on cardboard. The aluminum foil was attached to the cardboard before I started alcohol ink. Um, and then I, then I cut them out with my die cutter. And this is how it turned out. And I love how these leaves do because once it's on the cardboard, you can mold the cardboard and make it look a little more three-dimensional. Here are the uh, some of the alcohol inks that I use. So those are sitting up here, up to, at the top up here. And this is another piece that this is, I cut this chain link fence die out with, that's what was on the other side here. So this is another piece of that. This was card, the aluminum foil applied to the cardboard before I started the alcohol ink. Uh, and then I'll tell you which way I like it best. So this is a little pieces cut out from these little frames right here. So this was the first piece. This and the leaves were the first pieces that I did with the aluminum foil. I like how they turned out very much. And then I did go back and try shimmer paper again and getting a different effect. This was an embossed piece. This is a plain piece. So I did get a little bit different effect using a different technique. So we'll talk about that as well. But the first thing I wanna do, so let me get all these things out of the way. First thing I wanna do is <clears throat> just show you using a piece of aluminum foil not attached to cardstock yet. I have discovered that I think I like doing it that way better first, instead of attaching it to the aluminum foil, I mean, uh, the aluminum foil to a cardstock before I start, I've decided I like just doing the aluminum foil um, first, and then attaching it to cardstock, and then die cutting it. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do, I like using paper as my source for collecting the alcohol ink that's an overflow because it, 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 it's less messy to me. It doesn't continue to flow. It soaks into the paper, and that's what I want. So 
I'm just gonna put down some pieces of paper here, just from book page. Got lots of those. That's a good way to use them. Uh, and I will tell you that you'll need your alcohol ink, of course, your aluminum foil, and I like to use a little, the less shiny side. Uh, this, to give you an example of what the difference is, this leaf was done on the shiny side. This butterfly was done on the less shiny side, and I like the less shiny results better. <clears throat> So we have our um, piece of aluminum foil here. I'm trying, I've got the lights in a little different arrangement. I hope it's going to be light enough, but I didn't want it to reflect off the aluminum foil too badly. Uh, you'll need some alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. Uh, the higher the, uh, this is just 50%, the higher 97% or whatever is supposed to disperse the alcohol ink more. I find that I don't need it very much on the aluminum foil, and so I don't really use it much, but I have it just in case, and I have this in a little spray bottle, and I also have a pipette uh, if I decide to use it in that way. <clears throat> so, first thing is we have our aluminum foil. Then we pick our colors. I'm going to start, uh, and it's a good idea. I don't use gloves, but it's a good idea, too. I try to be very careful to not get it on me. If you do get it on your hands, alcohol will take that off. So it's not the end of the world. Even on even on my acrylic nails, it'll take it off of that as well. So the first thing I do <clears throat> is I just drop drops of color onto the aluminum foil. I hope you can see this. And I let it run just however it wants to picking it up and letting it run, and then I get another color. I think this was ginger. Let's see. Yes, that color was ginger. This color is Laguna. And when you place the alcohol on top of a color that you already have, it takes that color basically away. So I try to drop the other colors uh, down beside. I don't mind it overlapping because then it'll give you this darker marbly bits like <clears throat> like you see here. That's where colors have overlapped and I, I like that. That's how I want it to look. Uh, so I just keep adding, just keep adding alcohol inks, different colors, whatever colors. And I'm just going to be using blue and green with ginger and latte. And see how this is now pooling up right here, making a very dark color. I don't mind that. Move it around, let it run into each other, add more color, just drop it in, let it run. That's all you do. That is really literally all you do. Drop it in, let it run, and let it do whatever it's going to do. And you just keep messing with it until you get the color that you want, until you get the look that you want, the pattern that you want, the mix that you want. Now, I have not been able to recreate that little strip I used on my collage, if you saw my, the piece I showed you on the, in my collage book. I have not been able to recreate the effect of that one, which is a more smooth transition between colors. I don't know what I did, I was just playing. <laughs> So I don't really know what I did uh, on that to make that happen. Um, so this is going to be more like this one probably because, and I like that. I don't mind that at all either, but I sometimes would like that more muted sort of look. So this is what we do here. Now this is going to continue to change as you add colors, this is latte. I'm using latte now instead of the ginger. And that's going to continue to change colors as you add colors to it. Uh, you can add colors, let this dry, and then add more color as it has, because it won't, it doesn't displace the other colors as much, still does a little bit, when it is dry. It will still some, but not as much. Now see, I'm getting some 
different colors here by adding the color in and letting it drip through the other colors. Now, what you can also do, I've been experimenting with different things, so I'm gonna spray a little alcohol on this. And when you spray alcohol on that, you see the little mist marks, I'll call them, because the alcohol has missed it. Maybe, yes, the alcohol, the isopropyl alcohol has misted the alcohol ink, which makes it disperse more and differently. So you just continue to do this. And where there is alcohol, it will actually spread a little more, a little differently, um, but, the, but it's not necessarily to do that. And so you can make little places like that with your alcohol. If you've sprayed alcohol on it, it gives it, it just makes it flow a little differently, which makes it look different. So that is really all you have to do to do that. And then when this is dry and you apply it to card stock, then you can die cut it with anything. Any, it'll die cut beautifully. I stitched around this piece and it stitched around beautifully. See, I stitched around this. It did beautifully with that. It was applied to the cardstock with a glue stick, and that did beautifully. Now, I want to show you how these pieces I did early on, these pieces, and I wanted to show you what it looks like when you add an additional color to something that is already dried. So on this, I just used ginger, caramel, and latte. I did not have these blues and greens at the time, so I was just just playing, seeing what I could do. So if I take this now and add another color, it isn't going to displace the ink as much, but if you take a sponge, it will take it off. So you can lighten that up and make that look totally different uh, by doing a sponge on it, which if you want the, the aluminum to show through a little more, that's what you want to do is um, make it be, I'm going to do a little brighter blue. I've got a couple of blues out here. I'm going to do a little bit brighter blue because I want to see what that will do. And we'll just add it right over here. And that's a, this one's called Glacier. So it's a little bit brighter blue. The other one was monsoon. Okay, so now we can again blot it if you want. The drier it is, the less it will pull up, but you can get a more mottled look, but a more pastel look, which that's not a bad thing either. So that is good. Let's put a little green in this. So if you let it dry a little bit before you dab, you've got the undertone of this golden, more golden color under it. So you have completely, basically changed the color of this. So you really can't go wrong. You can make it look and do anything you want it to look and do, uh, pretty much. Uh, I am not able to, some people make art like flowers and things. Eh, I've not been able to do that. Don't, I'm not even sure I want to do that. Uh, so there you go. Now I want to also show you that I went back to the shimmer paper and this is this it has a little bit of gloss on it. It's not, it's cardstock. It's not real, real glossy, but it has a little bit of a sheen to it. And I was able to create this look from that. And this was embossed first. That's not the way I normally do it. I already had these embossed pieces. Uh, but that was embossed first, and then I used the alcohol inks. And I'm going to show you how I did that. So to do that, I just dropped alcohol ink on there, and it will disperse some. It, it's a, got enough gloss that it will um, not completely absorb it quickly. It will absorb it not quickly. But you also can apply 
your alcohol to a sponge. This is just a makeup sponge. And then you can dab on the color that way. And that is basically how I did this. I started out doing it just dropping it on the sheet and the embossing was keeping it from going over the top of the raised areas and I wanted to get it all uh, done, not just the indentions. I wanted to get the raised part done as well. So you can do that in those two different ways. And you can make this be just a neat little background using whatever colors you want to use. And I don't, like I said, don't change my sponge, don't care. You know, I just keep working with it until I get the colors that I want. Now I can get some more of that brown, just as ginger in there, like this over top of that. And the nice thing about doing this is that it doesn't displace the ink because it's already soaked into the paper enough to not do that. So that is the nice thing about working with something like this. So we've got that effect. Now I'm going to try a different color because <clears throat> I've got this flamingo. So I'm going to put some flamingo on there and see what that does to it. It's going to make it obviously pink some in, in whatever places. So there we go. I did not have not tried just rubbing it across. Let's see. It doesn't do as well as an, a distress ink might do. It goes down because you got to do it with a sponge. So it goes down into the the paper fibers more uh, than the distress ink would. So anyway, so that's that. So you can get that kind of look. And theoretically, I would do this before embossing. This is just what I already had on hand is I would do the shimmer before I embossed. And I'll give you another example here. This is a piece of shimmer. It's a little bit of a sheen to it. I am going to try it with this. So this is a, a champagne color. So <clears throat> I'm gonna probably use less browns because it is champagne and would come out brown. Uh, but it would it would change the color some and I've not tried this particular shimmer. I did silver. I've not tried this particular color of shimmer. I just found this in my drawer. So um, we're gonna see what that does. I'm not sure what it'll do. And it's different, it's different every time. It's gonna look different, do different every single time. So you don't know what you're gonna get. But play around with your colors. Play around with the technique uh, and let it be what it is. Okay, this paper is different. It's a different kind of paper than this. This is not really shimmer. This has a little more shine to it than this shimmer. This is silver shimmer. And it has the same sort of very muted effect. I don't like that as well. So that's probably not going to be something that I will do on a regular basis. I like this. And I don't know what this is. I just have a pack of these and I can't can't find the pack that haven't embossed yet uh, but that's a little bit shinier so it's a little bit um, has more of a coating on it and the more coating there is the more um, movement you'll get from your inks so let's add a little bit of this pink in here and see what we come up with because I did some of this, this orange here is really pinks and greens and all that mixed in together. So it gives you, in some of the colors when you mix it, it gives you purple. I have some purple, but this makes it be purple. <laughs> so it's fun. It's I think it's just a fun thing to try. See what you come up with. Figure out what you can do with it. And do what you can. So, again, I will say that when you do this, so experiment, because see, when I do this, and if I don't like that, 
not if I don't like what it's doing because it does pull it up. Then I just go back with some other color, put some more on it, let it mix and match in, and cover up that that I didn't like. So it's very easy to work with as far as like this. Like I said, I can't make art with it. I tried. Here, I just used one color. You blow on it, and this is on a very shiny cardstock. It's actually packaging paper. Um, and it's very shiny, as you can see. And you can blow on it and make it do these rivulets. But some people can do flowers with them. I haven't been able to figure out how to do that. I mean, I know that I've watched videos and I know the concept. It just doesn't seem to work for me. But that was not what I, that's not what my intent was for this anyway. I really wanted to use it for this sort of modeled metal sort of look because I wanted to be able to make a butterfly that looked like metal or a leaf that looks like metal but I wanted it to be colored so that was my goal and I have been able to accomplish that so we're good we're good with that so that is my process it's not hard and you can also have the um I'll show you what that'll do I also have the Tim Holtz blow thing. So you can blow it across there and it does make a difference. What it, where it will, if it's not moving enough for you, then you can blow it and still move it. You can spray it with alcohol and move it. Now that might make it blend a little bit better like I got on one piece. Oh, I got alcohol in there. I don't want to do that. And see, it'll, it'll blow out. You can do it with a straw. You don't have to have this tool. But you can blow it with a straw. And then we can pick up this if we don't like that. So I'm liking how that's turning out right there. Now this kind of does blend it in a little bit better. So that's a, that's a, a good way to do it. I don't want... Um, any of these silver pieces coming through. So I just go through and touch. And then you can, but I do like where I dropped that bit of alcohol right there. You see that little spot? I do like that. That kind of looks like a, it was an error in making something. So I sprayed alcohol on it to get to move it around a little bit more. You can make those little spots. Without the alcohol, you can. I'm just going to do it with um, the dropper of this. If you just take this and drop it on, see what that does. Okay, there was a piece right there. It, it just kind of dropped on there. And it didn't make that dot. It just smeared that. So it, it, it does different things. It's just mixing it, mixing the colors, mixing it with alcohol, and just keep working with it until you get the, your desired effect. And that's all you have to do. So I appreciate you coming along. I hope you would subscribe and hit the notification bell so that uh, you can get further notifications of other things that I do. Uh, and I just wanted to um, let you know what my process was for this. I appreciate you coming along, and we will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.